Hi Rotarians, thank you once again for joining me for this second session in the series on strategic planning for Rotary Clubs as part of the 2020 District 9780 Online Assembly. So this session takes you through the process of conducting a club survey and using that survey and your strategic plan to inspire a visioning session where you develop lists of specific action-based objectives for your club. Then you can turn that list of objectives into an annual action plan and also into committee meeting templates that drive all of the programs in your club. And finally, this session talks about reviewing your strategic and, uh, and uh, action plans on an annual basis. So at the end of the previous session, we had got to stage three where the club planning chair introduced the provisional club strategic plan to the members of the club at a plan initialization meeting. Now, if your club has decided to follow the complete planning process leading up to an action plan, the plan initialization meeting is also the logical time to ask members to complete a survey evaluating the current state of your club. Your club planning committee may develop your own club survey or you can use or adapt one that already exists. Now, one suitable survey and one that we used last year was the Rotary Club Health Check and it asks members to rate their club against 66 qualities of successful Rotary Clubs and it's under five different headings. Those headings are your club experience, service and socials, members, image of the club and business and operations. The survey can be completed easily with a pen or it actually can also be completed online. If you're interested, the quiz actually has a built-in prognosis page for each section and prescriptions for fixing problem areas. You don't have to use that actually, but it's available if you do. At Miraburra, we produced a modified version of the test without the prognosis section. And uh, the modified test is available in the downloads. This is a copy of it here. Members simply had to tick or mark the yes box if they thought the characteristic shown is actually currently evident in our club or in your club, in your case. The test only took members about 10 minutes to complete and asking them to do it in the plan initialization meeting means that we had a high rate of completion. Members not in attendance could complete the survey on a computer and email it in. Now stage four of the planning process was to have the club planning team collate the results of the survey and to make a simple, a simple summary of trends in that survey. We actually typed the results of this uh, collation onto a fairly basic Excel spreadsheet, and this is available in the downloads, and it simply calculated percentages of the yes responses on the right hand side there. Now we color coded all questions on the spreadsheet manually to indicate low, medium and high scoring results. Green shading means more than 70% of members think the club demonstrates the positive characteristic. Red indicates that less than 50% of members believe the club demonstrates the positive characteristic and yellow is in the middle. This obviously wasn't a very sophisticated appraisal of the results, but it did clearly uh, highlight some of the areas that are strengths for the club and areas of perceived concern amongst the club members. An Excel expert could no doubt easily allow and calculate graded responses to each question in the survey. For example, you could have 
uh, four possible responses like definitely, usually, sometimes or really, if you really wanted to. But a simple yes was enough for us to get a bit of a trend as to how members were feeling about various aspects of our club experience. Once the survey has been collated, the spreadsheet and a simple summary, uh, summary of the results would be sent to every member to think about before they attended a club visioning session, which is actually stage five. And uh, we've actually included a reflection of our results last year to give you an idea of how it could be done. So at stage five, we have our visioning session. And it's really an extended club meeting of two to three hours where members work through activities on a club visioning worksheet, such as imagining how the club might be in five years of positive progress and uh, asking for suggestions about some specific action-based objectives for the club to enable it to reach that vision state. And if the uh, activity or the visioning night includes a rating of objectives in order of importance. Here's the uh, a general outline of the suggested times that we'd use for a visioning night. Um, you'd start about seven, finish about half past nine, might go a little bit longer, but you can usually move it through pretty much according to those timings. So this is a copy of the visioning worksheet handout and members would be given about 20 to 25 minutes to complete the vision exercise activity uh, there on the right. And there's an, uh, another couple of pages after that. And they would do that with the RI, the district and the club strategic planning priorities or their uh, strategies in mind as they actually did the visioning exercise. After writing their visioning reflection and coming up with some possible objectives, members share these objectives under focus area headings. And these are all written onto butcher's paper and displayed around the room. Now before the visioning session, the planning team would have pre-populated these worksheets with the agreed club signature programs for each focus area because these do not get voted on in the prioritising session. You only vote on the items at the bottom, the ideas that come out of the visioning exercise. Members are then provided with some sticky dots and they prioritise the objectives on all of these sheets, apart from the signature projects and they prioritise them according to what they think would be best for their club. And what you get after that is, a, is 20 or so sheets of possible objectives uh, rated in order of priority. So lots of ideas for uh, objectives for the club. After the visioning event, the club planning team types the ideas from the club visioning exercise sheets onto lists of specific action-based objectives or into lists of specific action-based objectives under each of the focus areas or committee area headings. And this is where some clubs choose to leave the planning process. They give these lists of ideas to their chairs of respective committees and assume they will be incorporated into club programs as and when uh, the committees can do it. However, our Mirabara experience uh, has shown that leaving things there is very hit and miss. What needs to happen is that the list of objectives needs to be turned into an annual action plan, a plan that drives all committees and programs in the club. 
the club planning committee would then start this document and committees will finish it. So it's the club action plan which forms stage six. Now here's what a, an action plan looks like. This is a sample action plan for our international committee, or it actually is our international committee plan from last year. Notice the column headings. The first column is where the objectives from the visioning session are listed, one under the other. This part and the chart outline is actually completed by the planning committee for all focus areas or committees in the club. And the results are emailed to committee chairs. So they get a, a blank document apart from the objectives listed down the left hand side. Once the committee chairs have had a chance to digest the list of, the, of proposed objectives, all club committees meet during a normal club meeting to confirm and tweak their sets of specific objectives for the coming year. And we call this the action planning workshop. The committees consider all of the objectives and reduce them down to the objectives that they believe they can achieve in the coming year. So some of the objectives that were suggested during the visioning night might be culled at this particular meeting. But they do include their signature projects. They would be included in the process. Then the committee completes the details for the following columns. The done column, of course, is ticked when the objective is complete, but the how column provides uh, some suggestions as to the first steps to take to start getting that objective met. Here are the rest of the columns. The who column uh, states the name of a member responsible for the objective. And our experience is unless you have a name in that column, nothing will get done. So you must have a name in beside every objective, someone who has it as their baby. The when column is the suggested time for completion, and that's obviously subject to change once uh, the board or the planning committee has a look at everybody's uh, suggested times. You might need to tweak a few so that you get, you know, so that you prevent uh, different committees from clashing with others over the course of a year. But that's ultimately when the club hopes to have things happen. The next column, which is uh, how much, asks the committee to consider if an event is going to cost the club or if it's going to raise money and to put that amount, to, that uh, predicted amount into that column. And the final column, the for or from column, shows where the funds are expected to come from if it's going to cost or where the money is going if it's uh, money being raised. In other words, what cause will benefit from the money raised by the club. Stage eight is when the club planning team takes changes from that action planning workshop and types them up into a provisional club strategic and action plan document, which is emailed to all board members. And it contains the strategic plan that we talked about in session one, the, and the action plan for every major focus area committee, and also a, an introductory page. The board at its next meeting considers the provisional plan at what we call a plan confirmation board meeting and any final tweaks might be made if required, for example, to timings or, or anything that the board doesn't think the club can manage. And the completed now working plan is emailed to members along with a club engagement survey if required. We'll talk about that next. So here's the sample club engagement survey. It asks general questions about how members are enjoying their Rotary experience and how much time it's taking and so on, whether they feel involved. 
It seeks general commitments for particular cup projects. Uh, they'll be listed as the sort of uh, projects where we need a lot of people on deck. So we'll ask for people to commit uh, in advance for that. And it also asks members to suggest guest speakers. And the survey, of course, requires that members include their name so that we can uh, chase them up or, or follow them up if we need to contact them for uh, projects down the road where they've offered their services. Stage 10 is where the completed plan is presented to club members at what we call a plan affirmation launch. And if desired, members could be asked to complete their engagement surveys on the spot at that particular meeting if they haven't already done them and submitted them. Simply, we just, uh, members will have been emailed the plan, but we have a little celebration and maybe a toast to the uh, uh, launch of the new strategic and action plan. So, Stage 11 involves the planning team in collating the engagement survey and sending the results of that engagement survey off to uh, club chairs and anyone else in the club who can benefit from that information. They also start the process of developing agenda minutes templates for each of the club focus area committees. Now, here is an example of a uh, agenda minute template for the International Committee. The templates have all of each committee's annual objectives listed down the left hand side and they're copied straight from the action plan. Obviously there's more than uh, we've got here because this is a shortened page just to fit on the on the screen. So all of the club's objectives, all of the committee's objectives, are listed down the left-hand side of the sheet. And the rest of the sheet is blank, uh, apart from those subheadings there and the lines, the guidelines that are all over the sheet. So that's the minute or agenda minutes uh, template that is sent to each committee chair. Now, the template is used for every committee meeting and chairs simply work through all of those objectives or selected objectives, depending on how much time they've got, and they get a report on the progress of, for each objective one by one. Now, if someone is ready to move a motion regarding the objective, well, then their name and a seconder is listed in the second column there where it says moved and seconded, and the motion uh, is put and it is actually listed there in the third column where it says recommendations to board. And uh, the last column shows the person responsible for any action that may flow from the discussion. Now the template is updated for every committee meeting with any new information appearing in red type. After a meeting, the heading agenda at the top is changed to minutes, as it is already on this particular example. And the template is mailed to the board, exactly like that, as a report for that committee. Next month, the word minutes is changed back to agenda. You have the month and the year in there, of course. And all of the existing red type is changed to black type. And uh, then it's ready then to be sent to uh, committee, committee members and to be used for the next committee meeting as an agenda. So the final stage in the club planning process is the review process. And it's, this starts towards the end of the Rotary year, around May. And the planning team sends an email to the chairs of focus area committees, asking them to review and tweak their action plan documents for the coming year. We then, for the review stage, simply move to stage seven in the full plan document and repeat 
stages 7 to 11 as a plan review each year until a new full strategic and action plan is commissioned by the board, say three to five years later. So you basically work from stages 7 to 12 and that uh, effectively is the annual review. So here is a template of the email that is sent to the committee chairs around May to get them to start thinking about uh, planning for the next rotary year. And as mentioned above, all of the Miraborough resources are available for download but there are also some great strategic and action plan resources available, available from RI and also uh, from Brisbane Rotary. And the links are listed there for all of those. You obviously cannot click on the video, but uh, copy those links down if you need them. So here is a list of all 22 of the resources that are used in uh, the Miraborough strategic planning process. And these were the ones we used last year, including templates, dates, communications, checklists, worksheets and surveys. And you can download all of those from the uh, Rotary Resources gift box on the District 9780 site. So thank you for watching this particular session. And in fact, the two sessions on strategic planning for Rotary Clubs, we hope this information has been useful to you and uh, that it will result in some effective planning in your club and as a result, more effective ways of doing good in the world. Shalom.